that recipe for greatness consists of many things. Um, giant accomplishments, humility, intelligence, compa uh, compassion, and leadership, and he has them all. So we have benefited from hosting him on several occasions, from the premiere at the World Bank to uh, the opening of the UN when we co-sponsored a program with Merck. Now, while he was serving as permanent secretary, he also served as alternative governor for Botswana to the IMF, to the I IBRD and the ADB, chairman of the Botswana Development Corporation. He served on many key directorships, including the De Beers Mining Company. From there, he became the governor of the Bank of Botswana, and from 1982 to 1989, served as a permanent secretary to the president and secretary of the cabinet. And from 1992 to 1988 he, 1998, he served as vice president and chairman of SADAC from 1992 to 1996. I mean, this is an incredible story. I relate this chronology not only to show the breadth of this man's experience, but also to show the uniqueness of this country, Botswana. This career path illustrates the stability of Botswana and how a young person can grow to greatness when there is stability. In 2008, President Mohai gracefully transferred power to his successor leaving a great legacy of sustainable economic growth and democratic governance in Botswana. President Mohai, you have admirably carried on the Botswana tradition of far-sighted planning and balanced, skillful leadership that have made Botswana a singular symbol of good governance, not only in Africa, but in the world. Your Excellency, please share your thoughts with us this evening. I'm delighted to be spending this evening with you to talk about democracy in Africa, especially in the light of the negative reports that are dominating the world headlines about events in Africa visiting Congress persons being shot at. And as we remember also, uh, coups that have taken place in, in recent months, so that one gets the impression that Africa is a continent of bad news. And I want to say that yes, as an African, I admit there is more bad news than I would like. But at the same time, that it is not only bad news, there are also good news from Africa. Because there are a number of African countries which are democratically governed, and others who are democratizing. But you know, governance cannot be taught at school or at university. The surest way of ensuring governance is having free and fair elections and practicing the rule of law and respecting human rights, including women's rights. Because when there is democracy, the people themselves will ensure that appropriate policies are pursued, pursuant to national priorities. Now, elections and um, the existence of opposition parties are a necessary but not sufficient condition for good governance. I agree. I accept that. a necessary but not sufficient condition even for the practice of democracy. But there are a logical point. There are a sine qua non for democracy. Democracy means a choice among leaders contesting for power, offering the nation different patterns of governance 
and, and so on. And the people retaining the power to be able to throw them out of office. But my preoccupation is national leaders, national heroes, people who come to power by the will of the people. When they, are, they have done good, they are national heroes, they are national leaders. And in fact, it would be icons. The tragedy that I see is when such personalities overstay their welcome. Because what then happens, when they overstay their welcome, they lose their vision. And they begin to betray their mission. And they end up undoing the good that they originally achieved. It happened in the case of Sekotori. He was a, a famous man. But some of the things he did, including literally the murder of some of his own colleagues, and imprisonment and so on, and torture, of, for instance, his countrymen who was one of the first, sec the first secretary general of the Organization of African Union. Even now, as I speak, there are leaders who have done great things for their own countries. Sometimes they have resuscitated them when they were virtually dead. But when people have been in power for 20 years and they are continuing, then I begin to worry, lest as situations change, they begin to mistake their own personal interest their own desire to continue in power for the national interest. I don't know what we can do as Africans to ensure that our leaders leave when it's time to leave. <laughs> like the great Mandela. He served one term. 27 years in prison, only five years in power. He didn't say because I was in solitary confinement for 27 years on an, a lowly island, therefore I must rule for 27 years. <laughs> That's not Mandela. So I, I, I want to think in positive terms as to what we can do to induce people to leave when it's time to leave. There is nothing sacrosanct about two terms, no. But it is about right two to three terms. You can have two terms of six years each, or three terms of five years each, or two terms. I, I am flexible. We, 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 do, we, mustn't, we mustn't mistake a, a particular method for the substance of the thing. The substance is that really the, there is a, a time span within which Anybody can come up with new ideas of how to deal. I think one of some of the things we should do is to provide for presidential pensions that are adequate. And in some cases, in some cases, even lavish, even lavish presidential pensions are cheaper than a situation in which than a situation in which a good leader stays forever and in the end becomes a bad leader. I think those are the few thoughts that I wanted to share with you. Then I'm willing to take a, a few questions. Thank you. Thank you.